We have many, many fears. Fear of darkness, fear of living, fear of public opinion, fear of what my neighbour might say, fear of my wife or husband or the girl or the man, fear of insecurity, fear when you have security economically, fear of that you might lose it. Fear we have got so many fears. Why haven't we solved these fears? You have solved the problem of war, that is to continue war. And you have applied your brain to prepare for war. All the vast generals on both sides, or thousand sides, they're all preparing for war. Plans, submarines, airplanes, blah, all the rest of it. They've exercised their brain to produce all that. And why hasn't that same brain applied apply to this enormous sense of fear man has from the beginning of days? Why? Which means, why have you, the speaker, have not gone into this question seriously, as you do go very seriously, when you are hungry, when you are ambitious, when you want more money, you work at it. Why have we not gone into this question of fear? The psychologists, the therapeutists have explained the causes of it in different ways. If we could put aside all what they have said, because after all, it's all what they have said may be merely verbal. They might be as scared as you. Probably they are. I met several of them. I know they are scared like you. About something or other. And why have we not solved this question? And is it possible to end fear? We're going to go into that. Apply not only your feelings, your emotions and your brain to work at this, not escape from it, not try to rationalize it, but to see why we are incapable, or allowed ourselves to become incapable. What is fear? And you know when there is fear, the nature of it, how it throbs, how your physical the organism shrinks. How your brain becomes addled, almost paralyzed. Don't you know all this? Am I describing something abnormal? It's a fact. It affects your sleep, it affects your daily life, it affects, it brings suspicion, anxiety, depression, and you cling to something and hope that won't change and that won't bring fear.
either we deal with the root of fear or we trim the branches of fear. Right? Right, sir? Which, which do you want to do? Trim the branches of fear. Please, I'm asking, when he's asking this seriously, don't n- neglect what the speaker is asking. Do you want to deal with the branches of fear? There are a thousand fears, like a lovely tree. A tree which is the most beautiful thing, one of the most beautiful things on earth. It's got many branches, many leaves. Likewise, fear which is so ugly, it has also got many branches, many trees, many leaves, many expressions. Do you want to deal with that, the expressions, the surface? And outside, or do you want? Do we go together into the root of it? Personally, the speaker doesn't want to go into trim the branches, which is so futile. So let's together find out what is the cause of fear. We know all the expressions of fear. So. If we can find the root of it, the expressions can wither away. So what is the cause or causation of fear? If if one asks you that question, what's the cause, would you answer it? Cause. Or do you expect this someone to explain to the the cause of it? The explanation is not the fact. Right? You may paint a marvelous picture of the mountain. hung in all the museums of the world. But that picture is not the mountain. The word fear is not fear. Right? But the word fear may evoke fear. So we are not dealing with description, with word, but the depth and the strength of fear. And we are trying to find out together, not I explain, you accept, but together find out for ourselves so that it is you discover it. Therefore, it's your truth, not somebody else's truth. You can't live with somebody, someone else's truth. You can only live with truth. So what is the cause of it? The cause of it are going to it. Is it thought? Is it time? Is it thought? Let's look at it. I am living when he's living now. And 
thought says, I might die tomorrow, or I might lose my job. I have my money in the bank, but the bank may fail. I am all right with my wife, but she may turn to somebody tomorrow. I have printed a book, and I hope it will be a great success, which means fear. I want to be known, which is the most childish thing in the world. I want to be known, and somebody knows is known already much more than I am. So there is this thinking that is thinking I might lose, I might gain, I might be lonely. So thinking is one of the factors of fear, right? I am all right with my friends, with my wife and my children, but I also know, have experienced the sense of desperate loneliness. Don't you know it? A sense of deep, frightening loneliness. And I'm frightened. Have you ever examined what loneliness is? Why it has its cause? Don't you know? Don't you have this feeling of loneliness? Huh? Am I talking something abnormal? Saying something abnormal? Huh? You must all be saints. <laughs> So what is this loneliness which causes, you understand, sir, which causes attachment, holding on to something, however illusory, however false, however meaningless? I hold on to my wife. I hold on to my club, to my God, to my ritual. To my friends, because I'm, if I let go, I'm utterly lonely. Have you ever gone into that question? Why human beings are so frightened of loneliness? They may live with a group, they may follow some. <coughs> Guru and all the rest of that nonsense. <laughs> but strip them of all their decoration, they are what they are lonely. Why? Where are they? What is loneliness? Not to have any relationship with anything with nature, with another, with the friend or woman or the man with whom I have lived, all that somehow has withdrawn, I am left utterly empty, lonely. Why? What is this feeling of utter des despair? I'll explain, but the explanation is not the fact. The word is not the thing. If that thing, if that is, becomes very clear that the word is not the thing, you, Mr. Smith, is not Mr. Smith. 
The word is not you. When you say my wife or my husband, that is. You understand? Yeah, I'm glad you understand that at least. <laughs> so explanation is not the reality, the truth. So look at it, let's look at it without the word. Without the word, loneliness. Can you do it? To look at that feeling without using the word lonely or despair. Loneliness comes when all our days are spent in self-centeredness. The very activity of self-centeredness is producing loneliness, right? Because it's narrowing my whole or the vast extraordinary existence of life into a small little me. And when one realizes that, there is that feeling, my God, how lonely I am. And to face it, to be with it completely, not move away from it, then there is a radical change. So we must come back to this question of fear. We said thought is one of the causes of fear, obviously. I am thinking about death, because I am old man or young, or you see some hearse going by, with all the flowers, horses, cars. What a civilized country this is. With all the noise of death. And I see thought is one of the causes of death. One of the causes of fear, right? Do you see this? Obvious fact, right? Right, sirs? No. And also, time is a factor of fear. Right? I am afraid what might happen. I am afraid of something I have done which others are using as a blackmail. You follow? I'm afraid of that. So time and thought are the root of fear. Time and thought, there is no division between thought and time. Thought is time. Right? Now, the problem is, I'm sorry, I won't use the word problem. The question is, thought is necessary, time is necessary, right? To go from here to there, time is necessary. And thought is necessary to drive a car, take a bus, take the train. Thought is necessary. Time is necessary at that level, right? Now I'm saying, as thought and time are the root of fear, is thought and time necessary? There it is necessary. But psychologically, is thought and time necessary? You want you. Right? Is it? As long as time and thought are, ne- if you think are necessary, 
in the psychological world, in the world of the self, in the world of psyche, in the world of inside the skin, then you will be perpetually in fear. Right? If you perceive that, if there is a perception that thought is the root of fear and time, perception, not acceptance, then you, you thought and time are necessary at the physical level. Inwardly, it's not necessary. Therefore, you're watching them. You're, watch, you're watching it. The brain is actively watching itself. Every minute to see that thought and time do not enter into its realm. This is, requires, you understand, this requires great attention, awareness. So that the brain, which has accumulated fear for centuries, or for one day, that brain sees where it is necessary, where it is not necessary, therefore it is watching, like a hawk. So the thought and time doesn't enter into the whole process of living. You see? This is real discipline, this is learning, as we explained the other day. This discipline means, the root meaning of that word is disciple. The disciple is one who learns, who is learning all the time. He never says, I've learned and stays. So, as the brain is watching itself all the time so that it's active, so that there is no time for it to move or to change. You understood something? It's now quarter to twelve. You must talk. Sisters and ladies, our difficulty is we listen to a lot of things. We know a great deal. We have searched, asked, read. We have sought the advice of others. We wander the earth and find out, to find out what it's all about. But we never ask of ourselves, we never demand of ourselves serious, deep questions. We always ask superficial questions. And so we make our life very superficial. But if you ask questions, questions that are demand answer from yourself, so that you exercise your brain, your feelings, your whole attention is given to that question. Then you begin to discover for yourself without being told by anybody, including this speaker. And so when there is freedom from fear, you are then, you don't want gods, you don't want anything from anybody in the world. Then you are really a free man. <laughs> 